But I believe that uh, there are some adults, there are some parents that are just as accountable. Do I have a witness in this place? They got their behavior somewhere and from somebody. Maybe, uh, 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 maybe more of our young people would be successful if parents today were the nurturers they were supposed to be. Uh, and the reason I can talk about a young, the reason why I can talk about it, people of God, is because I had parents that supported us. I had parents that deposited into me. I had parents that told me that you can be anything that you wanted to be. Do I have a witness in this place? Maybe we would have more students instead of dropouts. Maybe we'd have more graduates than goof-offs. Maybe we'd have more doctors instead of drug addicts. Maybe we'd have more lawyers instead of outlaws. If more of our parents would step up to the plate and be the, 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 be the parents that God ordained them to be. Give God a praise in this place. <laughs> President Obama marveled at his mother's fortitude and tremendous will. Uh, she was relentless in her beliefs and successfully transferred those beliefs on to her son. We now know, though, through the medium of time that her beliefs were well founded in her son because he indeed accomplished what many thought was impossible and became the 44th president of the United States of America. But when you consider this question of hope, when you consider where this idea comes from and, and where do we have the audacity to hope? There are two schools of thought in trying to understand this concept of hope. One which seeks to uplift and promote the material success and progress of our world by placing our trust and our hope in its institutions, in government, in politicians, in people, in things. It's hope in this world system that many have invested their livelihoods and their dreams. We, not, we cannot, people of God, discount the evolutionary progress that our country has been afforded. We have more now than we ever had in the history of the world. We are able to do more now than we ever could before. Flying back and forth to the moon, we revolutionize the way we communicate with one another. We have iPhones and iPads and we're on Facebook and Twitter. We have all of these uh, accoutrements and we have all of these luxuries. We are at the apex of technology. There seems to be nothing out of the realm of possibilities. We cannot even discount the progress that we have experienced as a race of people. We have come a long way from the plantations of the South. I wish I had a witness in this place. The hope of our ancestors has produced black actors and actresses, black CEOs and CFOs, black athletes and entertainers, black millionaires and billionaires, black congressmen and senators, and people of God, we even have a black president. But let me put a little pin in that balloon because uh, having more as a nation, having more as a people, in my opinion, has not made us better, but it has made us worse. Let me say that again. Having more as a nation, having more as a people has not made us better, but it has made us worse. Having more has increased our pride and our arrogance. Having more has increased our capacity to believe that we are more. Uh, if we can't do it, then it just can't be done. Our intellect, our knowledge is what has brought us this far. This is the condition that we are in as a people. This is the concepts and ideologies that are being taught in our universities across the country that, that we, uh, we, we are more because of our minds and because of our intellect. 
uh, but in hope in these man-made institutions has drawn us further and further away from the one who is the true author of our success. And yet, we would much rather put our faith and trust in this world system and those that run this system than the God that created the world and everything in it. In today's society, it's God who gets the bad rap. It's religion that carries the bad stigma. It's the church that's binding and restrictive. It's Christianity that is exclusive and not inclusive enough. And I believe Brother Jay-Z said, uh, D Jesus can't save you. It's the church uh, that which needs to end in order for life to begin. It's God and everything that God stands for that must cease for us to experience liberty and freedom. Uh, but let me look in the camera when I say this I want to I'm talking directly to brother Jay-Z I don't care how famous you are I don't care how powerful you might think you are at the end of the day the Bible says every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father I don't care, I don't care how much money you think you might have. I don't care how much influence you might think you have, but Jesus is his name. He's the only one that can save you. He's the only one that can bring you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Do have witness in here. Let me slow down a little bit here. I'm, I, I, got a, I got a little ways to go. Uh, but it, it's God whose name is being dragged through the mud in today's society and we as Christians are sitting idly by and just watching it happen. And this obvious movement to replace God from our society is the devil's way of redirecting our hope and redirecting our priorities and redirecting our focus. Uh, you see people of God, the devil wants us to trust the world and this world system. The devil wants us to be governed by our situations and our circumstances. He wants us to become overwhelmed by them and ultimately succumb to them if you please. He wants you to get caught up in what's going on on Wall Street and Main Street. He wants you to believe that the resolution of our health care rests in the hands of Capitol Hill. He wants you to believe that the unemployment outlook of this country is governed by the cash flow of big corporations. He wants you to believe that our livelihood rests in the hands of those who care nothing about us. Uh, the devil wants us to believe that this system dictates who fails and who succeeds. This system dictates who is rich and who is poor. The system dictates who's powerful and who has no power. The system dictates who is employed and who is unemployed. But where does the devil get the audacity to tell the people of God that you are losers and not winners? Where does the devil get the audacity that we have to believe in, uh, in politicians and subscribe to the notion that if we put our faith in man that we will come out the better. But I just stopped by to let the world know and let you, you here at Greater Grace Temple know that you can't go wrong putting your faith and trust in God. Do have a witness in here. following and believing this line of thinking the devil has got us engulfed in what I call systematic hopelessness a relentless cycle of hopelessness that ultimately leads to the taking of one's own life or the lives of others it's a state of depression and sheer uh, hopelessness that causes us to see only the negative side of life it is our enemy who would like for us to place our hopes in other things or other men because they are because there our hopes are destined to perish oh uh, yeah the devil knows that if we put our faith in the government we're sure to be disappointed 
If we put our faith in other people, we're sure to be let down. And nowadays, society is in partnership with the devil in attempting to remove God from the public spectrum, moving him further and further out of the picture. Ah, but I just stopped by to let the devil know as long as I've got breath in my body, as long as, I, as, long as he wakes me up every morning, I'm going to give God the praise with everything that's in me. Do I have a witness in this place? Ah, the second and final school of thought is revealed, thank God, in Psalms, the 42nd chapter and verse number 5. Uh, where we find the people of God, the children of Israel, uh, taken captive for yet another time. Yes, we find the children of Israel experiencing systematic hopelessness 